Greetings, my fellow adventurers of the weird and wonderful. I say this because you guys have already clicked on the thumbnail and you guys know what's up. We're going to be watching an extremely peculiar video today and you know we're going to have to react to it. My name is Coach Charles and you're watching Charles Sailbox TV. So the video today involves a US Senator who's going to be asking questions named Ted Cruz, a former competitive US swimmer, Riley Gaines and the current president of the human rights campaign HRC for short, Kelly Robinson. You guys that follow my channel know that I don't really focus on anything that is remotely political. However, when we're talking about the attitudes and perceptions that go into the policy and rulemaking for any sport, my sport is linked to all sports. And this is because the attitudes that assist the reshaping of rules in one sport can be swiftly applied across the board to reshape any sport. So we're going to take a look at the questions um, thrown at these two, Riley Gaines and Kelly Robinson from the US Senator Ted Cruz. So let's take a look at the video. Ms. Gaines, I want to thank you for your courage. You are relatively young but you have demonstrated incredible courage. And because you have dared to speak up, you have been demonized, you have been vilified. I saw when you were attacked by a leftist mob at San Francisco State University for daring to speak up. You had an incredible record as a swimmer at the University of Kentucky. You were a two-time NCAA All-American. You were a five-time SEC champion. You were at, you're an SEC record holder and a two-time Olympic trial qualifier. But yet on March 27th, 2022, something changed. What happened on March, 26, uh, on March 17th, 2022? That's when Thomas and I raced in the 200 freestyle and again resulted in a tie. Riley Gaines is talking about Thomas, who is Leah Thomas, formerly known as William Thomas. He was a male swimmer who competed as a male with other biological males. He then, you know, began identifying as a female. I don't know how you do that, but that's what he did. Then transitioned with hormone therapy and then began competing against biological females. Yeah. And so you tied. What, what was the consequence of tying? We went behind the awards podium where typically you're handed your trophy, you're marched out, you're named an All-American. And so we go back there and the official looks at both Thomas and myself and says, great job, but you guys tied. And we only have one trophy, therefore we're giving this trophy to Leah. And I question this and I say, why? And at first I, I shortened it in my testimony, but really he stumbled on his words. He didn't know how to answer this. And at first he's, uh, well, we're just doing this in chronological order to which I further pressed, and I said, okay, well, what are you being chronological about? Because we tied. And if we're doing this off alphabetical order, G comes before T, so what are you being chronological about? To which this wasn't a script they had prepared for him. And he actually appreciated his honesty. He did say, we have to give the trophy for Leah because we, Leah has to have it for pictures. They've, they've made that clear. Leah has to have the trophy for pictures. You can pose with this trophy, but you have to give yours back you have to go home empty-handed. Leah Thomas takes the trophy home. End of story. So guys, as you can see from the response that Riley Gaines provides, she is not too impressed by the fact that there seems to be a bias, a preference for the trans athlete. Now, we should really be discussing why the NCAA allows um, trans women to compete against women biological women trans women are obviously biological males so they are carrying these advantages so in a situation like that there's two things that are already um are red flags one the fact that we have biological males as trans women competing against biological females and then for this bias or preference for the trans athlete to be promoted above the biological females. Anyway, let's go on. Now, let me ask you, as someone who's competed at, at the elite level, in your experience, is, is, is there a difference between women and men? Of course. I think we learn this at a very young age, watching even 12 and unders play. 
going through puberty causes irreversible um, advantage that no matter the training, no matter the diet, no matter any alterable um, change you can make will overcome that male advantage, especially in sports like swimming where lung capacity matters so much. Um, even something as silly as throat size, men have on average a 40% larger throat, which sounds like it's nothing. But when you're grasping for air, that 40% larger throat makes a huge difference in athletic success, not to mention height. Um, you guys know the differences. All right, guys, it's obvious. Puberty brings so many physical advantages for males over females. And we have things like VO2 max, bone density, height, muscle density, the muscle fibers, the development of muscle fibers with the fact that we have testosterone. And all of these things will be cemented through puberty. Even hormone therapy, after hormone therapy, it is possible to bring the performance of athletes, males and females, to the same level. But trans women will still be able to improve their performance levels at a greater rate to that of biological women because they will still possess some of these physical and irreversible physical advantages through puberty. The training experience to improve and change performance levels will always be different between males and females. Ms. Robinson, do you agree with Ms. Gaines that there's a difference between women and men? If the question is about trans women... I'm just asking, is there a difference between women and men? I mean, what I can say here is that the NCAA has rules in place. They've had rules in place for the last decade, and when this competition okay, okay, happened, I'm, I'm gonna try the again. rules were clear. Do you believe there's a difference? <laughs> the deflection, the level of deflection is amazing. Wow. Difference between women and men. It, it's a yes, no question. It is. It, do you believe there's a difference? Oh, I think that we're talking about this case with the No, I'm asking a question. Do you believe there's a difference between women and men? I Most people could answer this very simply. I, I'm curious if you're willing to do so. Oh, absolutely. I'm just putting it into the context of is the that conversation a yes? that we're having. I think that there are definitely... Wow. Oh, my God. Miss Robinson... Just answer the damn question so we can establish at least some common ground. Oh my God, just watching her mouth move. We're not understanding anything from this woman. Sweet Jesus. Definitions related to is, sex. Is, is that a yes? Yeah, so I'm trying to get a yes or no. I'm not trying to get, get a speech. Oh, I, is I'm, there a difference between women and men? I think that there are definitions for biological sex. Okay, so you're not answering that. Let me gender. ask you this question then. Why do women's sports exist? If you can't define a difference between women and men, why not abolish women's sports and just tell little girls to swim with little boys and see who wins? Oh, my man, my man, good question, Ted. If Crazy Confused Kelly accepts the obvious that there are differences between males and females, yeah, then of course, biological sex remains a defining factor for separating males and females in sport. That would just naturally be the outcome. But if this clueless Kelly, this crazy woman that just cannot answer questions, says that there are no differences between males and females, then of course, the mad, crazy psychotic woman opens up pandora's box for all women across all sports and i don't think she wants to do that so that's why we're getting this uh buck dancing uh i just thought that you wanted to talk about gender i thought you i just thought you wanted to distinguish but shut the f shut the fuck up seriously shut the fuck up just answer the goddamn question Donut. Simply saying that um, that sex is My different question, than gender. Why and I do, do believe why that women's do women's sports, sports have a great exist? value? I mean, Senator, I'll M tell you right Ms. now. Ms. Robinson, please answer the question I'm asking you. Absolutely. Why do women's sports exist? I think that there are so many positive benefits to sports. But I mean, why have a separate about category? Your... Okay, this woman is a donut. <laughs> this, this woman is an actual donut. How is she the president of anything? Maybe you could be the president for Krispy Kreme Donuts because you are the supreme donut. For women. If, if, you, if there's no difference between women and men, why to have women's sports? 
I'm saying that there's a difference between sex and gender, and that the NCAA has rules in place, which they have for the so last Mr. decade. Mr. Chairman, I, I would like to enter the to record. And so, guys, let this be a lesson for you. Yeah? This is what happens when you try to talk to a crazy person. How many times was she asked and told it's a yes or no question? And she could have said yes or no first and then offered her bullshit examination of whatever nonsense she was trying to say. And then we could have just ignored that part, but just say yes or no first. All she's doing is just hijacking terms. She's using the well-defined term of biological sex you know, and conflating it with the now truly absurd and utterly nonsensical word gender to bring some sort of chaos and confusion to these ideas of male and female, which is uh, binary and it has a dichotomy between the two. Where you have the overlap of intersex, they can still be distinguished as male or female. I would actually urge sane people to stop using this insufferable word gender and reject any arbitrary meaning these freely roaming mental patients are attempting to assign to them you know because we really need to stop encouraging these psychos i don't believe she should be a president of anything except for krispy kremes donuts we can have her operating as the president in a high security mental asylum and then yeah you know it's all good an article from duke duke law called comparing athletic performances for the best elite women to boys and men and it goes through examining in 2017 the top records for women in the world in various track and field events so for example in the 100 meter the top record for women in the world was 10.71 seconds now that record for the number one woman in the world in 2017 was in the year 2017 broken by 124 boys under 18. In that same year, the record for the number one competing woman in, in, in the 100 yard, 100 meter dash in the world was broken by a total of 2,474 men. This is the thing. Some of these cycles will have you believe that there is no difference between men and female when it comes to physical ability. They will say nonsense like, oh no, it's just because men are encouraged to go into sports earlier. There's more funding for boys. We're talking about 16 year old boys whooping the asses of adult females. The stat that he just provided, you know, the top female is having her record beat by a hundred and so boys in the same year. 16 year old boys. There's no shame on women because physically they are created to house a living individual before birth. So it is to be expected that this will play some hindrance on their physical and athletic ability. And then trans women should either compete against themselves and um, within their own category or against biological males. Sports should be based not on identifying or identity or pronouns. It should be based on biological sex. So however you feel you wanna identify, that's up to you. You can do that, however, when it comes to sports, it should be based on your biological sex. And that is it. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.